watching KSL News at 6. Total exhaustion, enlarged organ, blindness episodes. I'm four months into this. I'm now going on week seven. 110 days. Do anything you can not to get it. You never know. You never know what end of, of corona you're actually going to get. You just don't know when you're going to be the one that it causes long-term effects. This is not politics. I'm a human being and I am suffering from this. It is real and it's horrible. It's real. And I live it every single day. Hundreds of Utahns have a message tonight. They are sick, they are suffering, and they want you to do everything you can to not join their plight. They're known as COVID long haulers. Most of them only had mild symptoms at first, but now the unexpected long-term effects of the novel coronavirus have completely changed their daily lives. You've heard us tell many COVID survivor stories before. Tonight, we're letting these long haulers tell their own stories. With another record number of new cases reported today, health officials continue to urge Utahns to limit gatherings for the Thanksgiving holiday. For one Utah family, their long haul journey with COVID-19 started at a small birthday party for the family where they thought they were taking all the necessary precautions. We met at a restaurant with my siblings and their children. We had masks on until we sat down to eat and we took a group picture without masks on. We went to a movie. We wore masks into the theater, took them off during the movie because we were socially distanced from other people, put them back on after, you know, went back home. The next day, my 17-year-old son woke up and said, I think I'm sick, my body aches, I'm really tired. And I started getting a sore throat that day. My 15-year-old son called from school and said he, he didn't feel good, his head hurt, and he felt nauseated, and they wouldn't let him go back to class. I said, okay, that's it. We're all staying home until we all get COVID tested. Meanwhile, my sister, her son started getting sick, and pretty soon everybody in her family was sick. And my brother got sick about the same time. So basically, we spread it when we were asymptomatic to my entire family that was at dinner with me. And I felt extremely horrible about the whole thing, but we didn't know we were sick. And I didn't think asymptomatic spread was a major cause of spreading because I had actually recently seen Dr. Fauci say that. Had I realized that wasn't true, I would have been more careful. We were wiped out, we had no energy, no appetite. It was the most exhausting sickness I've ever experienced. My kids got winded going up the stairs. They missed about four weeks of school. They couldn't handle the energy it required. Even just to do online school, their minds couldn't handle the learning process. We were going for family walks by the lake, Utah Lake, and physically fit. I'm talking about going on family hikes, and now we can't do that. The other thing that's been difficult is, is their teachers. A lot of them have been really understanding, but some of them have treated my children like they're exaggerating, like it's not that big of a deal. Because the media, a lot of the media portrays it as if children get over it really fast and it's mild. And that's what I thought. I thought that's what it would be for my kids, but it has not been whatsoever. And they're not healthy, they're not normal. They're not able to function like a normal child should be able to. It's been overwhelming and it's a full-time job. I mean, I have a calendar booked with specialist appointments, lab work, the hospital knows us. They don't even ask for my name anymore. I feel like I'm living in a nightmare. <laughs> when are we gonna wake up and be normal again? When are we gonna wake up and have our lives back and be able to explore the beautiful scenery of Utah and live our lives? And I don't know if that's ever, I don't know when it's going to happen. And the doctors don't know either. The doctors don't know either. It's a common phrase we've heard when we've spoke to more than two dozen COVID long haulers. Early research shows 10 to 25% of people who survive COVID experience long-term effects, but finding doctors who know how, how to help is difficult. There's not really been any doctor that can tell me what's wrong with me. They've been running test after test on me. Most of the tests that I've had point to nothing. A CT scan, a stress echo. Cardiologist pulmonologist, ENT. The blood work's all coming back normal. Dozens of blood vials all taken for testing and every single thing has come up at normal. It took me about four different doctors until I finally found a doctor that's like, I, I've heard what COVID can do. I, I've heard there's some people who struggle with it long term. Whenever they test anything, they always just come back and say, it all looks okay. You know, we can't explain why your organs are enlarged. We can't explain why you still have kid or blood in your kidneys. We can't even explain why you're losing eyesight. 
Doctors are perplexed by the myriad of long hauler symptoms. But as new specialist Jed Bull found out, they believe inflammation may be at the core of the problem. One nurse practitioner who has worked with multiple patients with long-term COVID says some of those patients are extremely sick, yet their test results don't always match what they're feeling. At the same time, she does not want them to give up hope. It's a challenging conundrum, um, and I think all of us are learning as we go. Heidi Vaudry is a nurse practitioner treating COVID patients. She's constantly looking for the latest developments on treatments. We're just throwing everything we have at this, and with success in one person doesn't necessarily translate to success in another person. She's seen fit patients flattened by the virus. Really profound fatigue and exercise intolerance. Now months out and now inching their way back to kind of normal. Others plagued with cognitive problems. Where they just tell me that they have brain fog and word finding problems and memory problems that are very troubling. Others experience heart and breathing problems. No matter what they do, it feels like they can't take a deep breath. Um, they feel like their lung capacity is diminished. But there's a subset where their breathing problems persist sometimes for months so far. So how long that's gonna last? We're not exactly sure. Dr. Thomas Miller is chief medical officer at University of Utah Health. With other viruses, he says, lung damage can be permanent. That remains to be seen with COVID. There's also evidence the virus attacks tissue in the nervous system. For reasons we don't quite understand, we don't know who that's gonna be before they get COVID. Because this seems to be a really inflammation-driven thing. Vaudry tries to reduce inflammation in patients. But she says that only works in short bursts with targeted symptoms. Men are typically more likely to die and women are more typically likely to develop the long haul symptoms. More puzzling observations. That's, that's the real issue is how do you identify those who will be impacted? And we can't right now. I think it's going to be years before we fully unravel the secrets of COVID-19. So prevention is critical. Let's do what we know actually works to prevent people from getting infected so we don't have to worry about who it's going to be that's going to actually have the, the major consequences of this illness. The medical community still searching for good answers for COVID long haulers. For KSL 5 News, I'm Jed Bowl. Jed, thank you. Coming up from mounting medical bills to losing their jobs, Matt Gephardt investigates the options for those long haulers facing potential disability. Thousands of dollars on ER visits, doctor visits, and specialists. Every time you go see a specialist or a doctor, that's just money that I'm throwing at it. By week three, I had to go back to work. I couldn't afford to stay home anymore. I actually lost my job. I'm hoping that this doesn't turn into some sort of disability for me long term. I want to start a new career. I have a lot of hopes and dreams. From lost wages to lost jobs, there are Utahns tonight who are too sick to work due to COVID-19. Could COVID-19 be considered a disability? We asked KSL consumer investigator Matt Gephardt to look into that. For longtime IT manager Susan Wolf, her job required long hours, focus, and travel. But then she got COVID. So I went off work at the end of May and haven't been back to work since. The lingering effects of the disease make doing the job impossible, Susan says. And now she wonders how she's going to survive financially. She is in good company, says Edgar Jatu, executive director of Workplace Fairness. You know, people are scared. Jatu says the rules are set up to protect Americans who become disabled. And according to the Americans with Disabilities Act, struggling to breathe is a disability legally. Begging the question. Is COVID-19 a disability? COVID-19 itself is not a disability. It's, it's a virus. Um, but the, uh, the effects that may come from it could be a disability depending on how it affects you. The law says that an employer is supposed to make reasonable accommodations for an employee who is disabled. The point, of course, being to keep as many Americans as possible working. So that could mean extra breaks. It could mean that, particularly if you're a long hauler, maybe you go on less frequent trips. You know, it, it could just depend on what is possible. Jatu's advice to somebody suffering from COVID aftermath or any other medical condition that makes it hard for them to work, do not suffer in silence for years hoping that you'll get better. 
The longer you wait to tell your boss that you may have a legal disability, the more the legal doors may close on you. You don't want to let these things linger. Uh, you know, you want to act quickly. I have never even taken a two week long vacation before in my career. As for Susan, who has always prided herself on her work ethic, she says she cannot believe that it has come to this. Knowing that I now have to, um, uh, you know, apply for long term disability is kind of a, a, a shock and uh, something that has been hard to deal with. In Salt Lake City, Matt Gephardt, KSL 5 News. Matt, thank you. For folks who can't work at all, there is a legal process to becoming declared disabled, at which point they could qualify for Social Security benefits. Coming up, the mental toll long-term effects of COVID-19 are having on long haulers and what experts say family can do to help. Plus, finding support through their suffering where Utah long haulers are coming together. It has been emotionally extremely draining. There's been days where I've just felt so alone and so isolated. The anxiety, the depression from it. Guilt of who I've been around. It's just this uncertainty of what the future is gonna be. I have no idea. We have no idea. I go through a lot of depression because I can't, I can't figure out how to tell myself why I can't do these things that I used to be able to do. I'm trying to decide mentally how I'm gonna deal with this. If you think COVID-19 is just a physical illness, there is plenty of evidence to cause us to think again. Utahns trapped in the endless cycle of its long-term side effects are struggling to process what may be a permanent limitation and change to their everyday life. New specialist Heather Simonson recently spoke to a mental health expert who offers ways to cope with a big and sudden life change. Change is scary. Single mom Jennifer Hunter faces uncertainty daily. I think that's probably the hardest part, seeing where you were a few months ago to where you are now. Last June, while training for a half marathon, she got COVID. It put her in the ICU with 30 blood clots in her lungs. You wonder if this is the new normal or if you're ever going to get that old you back. Five months later, Jennifer still has shortness of breath, fatigue, and low oxygen. Oh, my sister, um, not long ago, told me I needed to stop being a victim and just get over it. And it's like, I really wish I could just get over it. Dr. Kristen Francis says long-term complications from COVID can be depleting. A sense of hopelessness, worthlessness, even thoughts of suicide can definitely happen with an abrupt change. Francis says cutting back to cope is important. And just having a sense that that's okay for now and uh, that by having a moderation approach to your lifestyle, you can then gradually add those things back in over time. Mother Sarah Lee Johnston has been sick for eight months post-COVID. And here is... She quit her job to manage her erratic heart rate and periodic blindness. And I start to doubt myself and think, maybe I'm just a little crazy. Maybe I'm paranoid. Maybe I, you know, it's it's really, that's been a disturbing thing is how much it's made me doubt myself. Joining support groups and practicing mindfulness are key. To be able to experience the moment, to let go of a lot of the stress and anxiety that's weighing them down, and to live in the present. I can't walk around. So this is Kurt Rowley's second go-round with post-viral illness after contracting H3N2 in the 90s, this time from COVID. It looks a lot like a mental illness uh, to have this, but it's definitely not because treating it like a mental illness doesn't work. Experts recommend being direct with loved ones about your needs. Yeah, it's not helpful. It's hurtful for me, and it's not it's not um, supportive in the way that I need. Heather Simonson, KSL 5 News. Heather, thank you. With so many unknowns, it's not surprising COVID survivors are feeling alone, discouraged and depressed. But as Ashley Moser shows us, hundreds of Utah long haulers who are struggling are finding support online. If the doctors don't have any answers, like where do you go? Where do we turn? You know, we have nobody. Three months into her long haul, Lisa O'Brien started a Facebook support group for Utahns suffering from long-term COVID complications. Her group of Utah long haulers has grown to over 800 members with dozens more survivors joining every week. Posts on the page range from asking for advice to just commiserating with people who've unfortunately been there. You go into the group and you say, 
is anybody else having like burning itching eyes and blurry vision and her and like 50 people are like yeah i'm having that you go oh i'm not crazy i'm not insane my throbbing aching sore feet are a real symptom it's not me just being crazy it's so validating i'm not alone hey and thankfully i'm not crazy and there there are other people who who have dealt with this for even longer than i have the group also works to keep members informed of research opportunities doctors who are understanding of long-haul symptoms and treatments that seem to work or not hopefully if we can continue to um let people know about what's going on that eventually the the research and the resources for the medical community will be there so that they can learn how to treat long COVID and how to help people continue to recover. And for many, it offers hope and healing. This support group, when I saw this was being formed, I jumped right on board because not only Sundays do I need the support, but I want to give the support too. The Utah Long Haulers page is available for anyone suffering from COVID symptoms for 30 days or more. You can find them by searching Utah COVID-19 Long Haulers on Facebook. We'll be right back. It is frustrating when when people talk about it and say that it's it's nothing worse than a cold. Our community as a whole doesn't seem to really understand the gravity of the situation. What makes me sad is there will be a lot of unnecessary suffering because people didn't take it seriously enough. We want to thank these Utahns for being willing to share their experiences with us. Before we say goodnight, Utah's COVID long haulers have one last message for all of us. You know, if we could just do, do what we're asked to do, even if we don't like it. Instead of fighting about masks, you know, wear them. If we could just recognize this is what's going on. We're all human. We're all facing the same issues here. Let's show up for each other in a responsible way. Let's care about each other. The sacrifice in the short term will bless the entire community. It, it will help all of us to get back on our feet and it will prevent pain and suffering. We can do it. We just have to decide that we care about our community.